Hello there. Let's play some poker. Kings, that's that's my second favorite hand. But we get no action. Yeah, also guys, if you are watching the series on YouTube, uh, make sure to also follow me on Twitch. You can click the link in the description below. I'm planning on streaming more again, which is kinda contradicting to why I started doing YouTube. So the main reason behind doing YouTube was to be able to make content and have it be, yeah, because of the episode format and shorter videos, but more often, you know, it's like easier to manage the time behind that compared to doing streams on Twitch. But I want to try to do both at the same time, so make sure to follow me there too. It's different content, so the content you see on YouTube is usually not from Twitch, and the, the content you see twi on Twitch is not going to be the same as on. on on YouTube so uh, but that, that's also something I could change at some point I like to experiment a lot, a lot with my stuff I mean if you already know me from Twitch, Twitch then you know uh, you know that already that I like changing stuff all the time Alright, in this combo we see that and I'm gonna be banning the turn. Actually no, let's check all turn. And we're bluffing the turn there. And that's the perfect, that's perfect, especially if he has a hand that should not bet the turn. Okay, let's see. That's, okay, so this is best case result. Best case scenario. If I play C-bet flop, he calls a queen, and then if I check to him, he bets a queen, even though he should never bet this queen here. Um, obviously, it would have been better if I bet the turn and he calls a queen, but because I think that's... Unlikely. Even though after obviously after seeing him betting a queen after I checked him, especially this very random queen who suited. Yeah, I guess he would probably call the turn at him. <laughs> but yeah. How do you size the turn? I mean it's just yeah, it's just unexpected to see this stuff. Also, the good thing is he bet turn and gave up river. If, if he bets river again, then we have a problem because I fold the better hand. So... But yeah, it's, it's one of those lines that's the best here. Either bet check, uh, bet check call, check fold. Or bet bet check or check call. Something like that. I mean there's multiple different lines you can play here, but in this specific scenario with Ace Five of Diamonds they're probably all very similar in the in the EV anyway. Check all the turn. Um, 
I'm hoping he just bets random, like even ace highs. Now we have a problem because now he very often has the ace, but there's nothing I can do about that. If he jams here, I think he has aces, but uh, once again, there's just nothing we can do. Oh my god, the worst possible flop. It's not the worst possible because ace queen to jack would be worse, but. Yeah, it's we're dead here. For sure. We're either dead or we he has queens. And we check down on when but as soon as he bets once we lose. I don't give him a weak enough range here to be betting worse ends often enough. Also his the player tendency is just The player tendency plays a very big role here. Probably exactly queens, right? <laughs> oh, what? Wow, that is more than unexpected. Wow. And <laughs> the funny thing though is that he didn't bluff the sand. If he calls a 4-bet in position here like this with queen 10 suited, he needs to bluff. He has to. Okay, we we'll slow play the ace here. We have a gut shot that we would like to hit for f as, as cheap as possible. We don't have a hand that can triple barrel often. Uh, we also have a backdoor nut flush draw. A lot of reasons why I like slow playing this hand. Now, I think we're always dead. But if I do tr decide to trap a top air like this, I'm not folding. And he has a random buff. Very similar to... Uh, I think it was actually last episode, in the beginning of last episode. Whatever. But yeah, you will see this a lot, where people just... You, you, you check back flop and they just double barrel random hands. Uh, I think the main reason you see that so often is that just a lot of coaching sites teach that. And it's it's good that they teach it. Like it's in the sense of it's it's a good strategy to do that. But a lot of people do it randomly, they do it every time, and for this is one of those spots where I would not recommend it to do it every time, but if he does it with 10-7 of spades and it looks like he just does it every time, and then he's just gonna burn money on his riverbed against a lot of people, his turn bet is always gonna be at least break even, but like simply for the fact that if people check back flop, they usually have a very weak range, they don't trap enough in those spots, so. Exploiting it by just betting everything that doesn't have shown on value works, it's just that on the river you should not bet every time as well, you should think about what you're targeting. And here his logic could have been that okay, maybe he's targeting my pocket jacks and I'm folding pocket jacks, so it would work against that, but because um, I have a lot of ASICs that I check back here. In general, I also have a lot of stuff that I simply fold to the turn bed. For example, 10-7 of spades is something I would I would not bet it on the flop. Actually, actually I would bet that, but 10-8 of spades, for example, I wouldn't bet. <laughs> anyway, so his turn bed is nice. It just it's out of profit, probably. But his river beds. 
probably not making the profit he needs. I'm gonna barrel three times here. But he falls turn already. This is a fold, and that's it for this episode. Press the like or dislike button. See you in the next one. Bye bye.